I have a question. Is there a certain place, maybe a restaurant or store that you remember fondly or have an attachment to? During our nostalgia special last month, historian Felix Bunnell shared a list of disappearing places around Seattle. Now, after that, many of you shared places that you miss. So here's Felix with a few of your favorites. One category was movies and recreation, like movie theaters, I think. They've suffered a lot during the pandemic. I think people especially miss movie theaters right now. But um, one that kept coming up was this Lewis and Clark complex down by the airport. Went dated back to the 1950s. It's been gone for almost 20 years, but there are multiple screens. There was a bowling alley there. You'd see it when you drove by the airport. But for, for people in that part of South King County, that uh, south of Seattle, it was just a, a magical place. Really? Now, it was an indoor movie theater, and you said yeah. it was kind of a complex. What was around it? Well, it had, had a bowling alley, too, because, again, these, these like I think like a theater and a bowling alley, these are these kinds of businesses that require lots of real estate, a big parking lot and lots mm -hmm. of lots of room for, for bowling and for seeing movies, big, big movie theaters, lots of seats. And I like the fact it's named after Lewis and Clark. What a goofy thing to name a movie theater after the people who came out and did the core of Discovery, you know, exploring at the behest of Thomas Jefferson more than 200 years ago. That's, that's a great name for a movie theater. Aww. Another theater that just in, just in the last week or so uh, looked like they were tearing it down is the Guild 45th in Wallingford. Yeah, it's been closed since 2017. It's been kind of painted over. The people have been putting sort of joke names on the marquee and stuff. But I guess the marquee was damaged, so they had to tear it down. There was a big scare. It doesn't look like it's ever coming back. But that movie theater came up again and again in people's fond memories. I saw and that a lot on social media over the last week or so <laughs> from Wallingford. Another thing that seemed to evoke people's emotions and you got a lot of feedback over was restaurants. Yeah, and restaurants have a little bit more than just the food. This one that came up a lot was called Pizza and Pipes. And I admit, I never went to a Pizza and Pipes in my life, but they were all over the place. There was one in Greenwood, one down in uh, University Place, one in Bellevue. And what it was was a regular pizza restaurant, but built into each building was a classic theater organ. In fact, the one in Greenwood had the leftover pipe organ from the Paramount Theater, a giant Wurlitzer taking up, I don't know how many square feet of the building, but so many people have fond memories of sitting there, eating their pizza, chewing on the crust and hearing, you know, the organ player playing like silent film music while they had silent movies and stuff playing on a screen and against the wall. Oh, that seems like <laughs> such a loss that we don't have that anymore. Yeah. And then other memories came up, little kind of one-off places. And this was one of my favorites in downtown Seattle at 6th and Pike, a place called Abruzzi's. It was a New York style pizza place. It was there from the mid 1950s to about 1994. I think Nike Town sits on top of it now. Oh no! I, I used to go there back in the early '90s. You'd get this sort of kind of not mediocre, but just really simple, thin crust pizza with a little bit of cheese on it. It was really cheap. One of the shakers for the Parmesan cheese and the red pepper flakes, oh. and it was like it had been lifted up from New York and dropped three thousand miles away in Seattle. And what a cool old place! What um, a loss! Yeah, another place that you know everyone knows Dick's Burgers, which is still mm -hmm. in business and all over the place. But yeah. Dags was another favorite. They had a really visible location just north of the Battery Street Tunnel on Aurora. That neighborhood's changed a ton, of course, but yeah. Dags was really popular for years. Yeah. And then, you know, along with the restaurants, there's the other categories, there's other retailers, places where you just had to go to go to buy a, you know, a roll of paper towel or a mouse trap or whatever. And a couple of the big ones were Chubby and Tubby, which was a great name. That was and a it, real place? Yeah, it dated back to the late 40s. Uh, there was one down on Rainier Avenue, one on Aurora, up around 100, uh, 95th or on Green Lake, that kind of area. But that's where you go to, you you'd go there and buy your Converse tennis shoes or your other sort of, you know, like waiting pools and kind of that generic kind of variety store stuff that we all just sort of take for granted, but that was one great place to get. And it was pretty cheap. And one more is Ernst Hardware, a, a locally based chain. They had locations all over the place. They're the same company that had a place called Pay and Save in Lamont's. Just a generic, nothing super special about it other than it was local and you knew the people when you went there and you knew where everything was located and there wasn't being controlled by some Eastern syndicate or something. It was just a local hardware store. People have, you know, they post pictures of the old bags, you know, the receipts from Ernst, these little bits of ephemera that come up, people love to share. So <laughs> I was just thinking that, I mean, it's such a, it's just a time of uncertainty right now. It's nice to think of the things that were so certain to us at that time. I know that you got a big response. I, I, were you surprised as a historian that you got such a response? Well, you know, I like to think of myself as this very sort of serious historian caring about like, you know, the, 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 the important stories behind things and why things are important for society and that sort of stuff. But I get hooked on this stuff too. I, you know, I'm from Kirkland. I grew up over there. I live in Seattle now, but I find myself over in Kirkland three or four times a year, just kind of driving around, trying to look for the, evoke some memory of something of, of who I used to be or what the area used to be. There, there's nothing wrong with being able to have serious history, but also have this, just this nostalgia for things that we love and that remind us of the people that we love and the, the things that, uh, that make this area special. So no, I, 
I was surprised, but I shouldn't have been surprised. Of course, <laughs> of course, I'm nostalgic. I'd, I'd be a liar if I said I wasn't. Gosh, you know, it's hard not to be nostalgic about things. I don't know if y'all remember, but about um, it, our last show in 2021 was all about nostalgia. And that's where we got these great ideas from all of you. Super uh, producers Susie and Rebecca are joining me now. <laughs> Ladies, do you have certain places throughout the area that make you nostalgic for another time? So I actually remembered the Lewis and Clark Theater that he talked about first. Oh, right. um, I think I saw The Little Mermaid there, like in 1989. Oh. <laughs> um, but what I remember about that place is that there were like murals on the wall of That's like Lewis cool. and Clark and the Native Americans. I can't remember if they were on the oh, outside or on, I think they were on the inside though. But that's kind of what made that movie theater different than the other ones. Mm. Oh, I love that. I remember Farrell's ice cream and that played a big part in my life. I know we've talked about that before, Farrell's being here and Felix has talked about that. But it was also in Southern California where I grew up, and yeah. I spent a lot of preteen and teen time at Ferrell's, and they, it was just so loud, and everybody seemed so happy, and then, of course, ice cream, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's funny you mention that, because after we did the special and we talked about yeah. Ferrell's, I was talking to my aunt about it, and she was like, oh, as a child, you had a total freak out there because it was so loud that apparently oh. I ran out of the place and they never could get me back in. So. Isn't that funny how you, that's not the part you remember? No. You just remember how loud it was. I think for me also there was some a place called Bob's Big Boy. Yes. A big franchise. And I think I loved it not because the food was that great, they put American cheese on spaghetti, which was <laughs> very weird. I don't I remember that. But I just remember sitting next to my grandfather and then my father, Aww. we sat at the bar and ate. So I think that's the memory for me. I remember that. Too. I remember the food there was not the best. <laughs> not the I best. think there still is a Bob's Big Boy in beautiful oh. downtown Burbank, oh. uh, California. But uh, yeah, it's funny. Uh, for me, locally, you know, obviously I've only been here about, about almost close to a decade now, which is crazy. But... When I first moved here, when we, King 5, was on Dexter, we were really close to the original 13 coins. Oh, yeah. And I used That's to right. go there every day to the point where they'd be like, welcome back. Like, literally, <laughs> I gained all my pregnancy weight there. <laughs> and it was such a neat building. And, of course, it had to be torn down to make way for progress. But And it, it's moved. So it's still, like, they, and they took a lot of the original, like, the big original chairs with them. Oh, cool. Which I was so glad because those chairs were so iconic. They're these, like, very 60s, you know, tall nice. chairs, and they tried to bring a lot of it, but it is hard because once it's gone, yeah. it's gone forever, yeah. and it brings up that conversation of, yeah, maybe it is an, a historic monument, but right. when do we start Our saving heart. things, you know? Yeah, it takes you back to a, a time. You like the chicken parm there, right? I think you yes. introduced me to that. <laughs> you know me. So good. <laughs> You all, it's a we, white yeah. sauce on the chicken Amazing. parm if you've we never had it. Trip. It's really good. Oh, man. Now that I've mentioned American cheese on spaghetti, we need to go to the right? point, right? <laughs> they have literally the best chicken parm I've ever had. It's so amazing. Oh. Um, and I'm sure there are a lot of other places that y'all remember, too. So please keep sending us this, because Fe Absolutely. Felix loves talking about that. He does. So, ladies, thank you for sharing, yeah. um, and thank you for sharing. Again, send us anything you want us to check out historic-wise or nostalgic-wise.